You are tuned to ARP on the Accelerated Radio Network. It's 12 noon, and it's time to have lunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Bringing money talk you can understand. And now here's your host, Miss Charlene. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Miss Charlene, and welcome to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Today we have in our studio Miss Cynthia Tan. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Good afternoon again. Yes. Thank you for inviting me here. Of course. This is our New York life insurance friend, and she's here today to talk about something that we avoid talking about. (laughs) We avoid, in some case, making sure we have, Mm -hmm. and it's something that will be needed at the end of our lives, and that's life insurance. And so I just thought we would share some information so that people could have a better idea. Mm Mm-hmm of life insurance policies. We've all seen people out, you know, by the freeway, on the street with a sign saying they're doing a car wash because someone passed away Mm -hmm. or that they have a family member that didn't have life insurance and they need to bury them. And it's not a topic that, you know, like I said, it's not the fun topic, but it's a necessary topic because it would be so easy Mm -hmm. to protect ourselves and people don't know. So that's why I wanted you to come in today. So thank you. Well, you're very welcome that actually really breaks my heart when i see people right there at the street uh, or at the uh, church passing the basket for yes. someone who passed away that breaks my heart i always thought of i wish i had talked to them or right. i wish they had talked to someone a life insurance professional just right. to let them know what life insurance is exactly and i wanted to say at the top of the show we're not here to discuss the cost of it we're not going to go into pricing mm-hmm. if you want to know what it will cost Give Cynthia a call um, and she'll give her contact information throughout the show so that you can sit down with a professional and have this conversation because everyone's situation is different. Mm -hmm. But what I will say about the cost is you would be surprised how inexpensive it can be to have insurance that will cover you and your family members so that you are not the person standing out at the curb with a sign saying, please help me bury my family member. So um, let's get started. Okay. So what is life insurance exactly? Well, in any kind of insurance, uh, specifically life insurance, Mm -hmm. it's meant to protect something or someone. Right. So when you think of life insurance, people buy life insurance for so many reasons. It could be to protect their family. It could be to protect their income. It could be to protect their quality of life. It could be to protect their business. It could be used to pay Uncle Sam for a state taxes issue. So there's so many different ways why people buy life insurance. But ultimately, the reason why people buy it is to protect something or someone. And um, what's really odd right now is that LIMRA, which is the Life Insurance Marketing Research Association, they actually interviewed a lot of people and they said 85% of the individuals they interviewed say that, you know, life insurance is important. What's ironic about that is only 62% have life insurance. So America is really underinsured, right. which is a huge problem right now. Um, September is Life Insurance Awareness Month, yes. and that's when we really talk about the importance of life insurance, especially right now, America is underinsured. The people who don't have life insurance always think that um, life insurance is expensive. You said so yourself earlier right. that it's very costly, but really n- it's not. Exactly. It's not it can be c- very I- inexpensive. Yes, yes, and think about it. If you're protecting yourself, um, from any kind of uh, any kind of uh, accident, for instance, for car insurance, mm-hmm. then why don't you protect someone else or your family to make sure they have that quality of life when you prematurely die? Exactly, exactly. Now, you know, you, you mentioned that there are different types of policies, and I'd like to get a little bit into that right. because there are a variety of policies. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I may have spoken, I may have said something um, earlier in the show, but I did want to bring out the point that it, it can be very inexpensive, mm-hmm. very inexpensive to get life insurance. So um, when we when we do wrap, I'd love for you to get an opportunity to talk to Cynthia about life insurance and how, yes. you know, it will impact your family because you sleep better at night knowing right. that the people in your family are protected. Mm-hmm. And that they have, you know, if something were to happen to any member, God forbid, you know, that they would have a decent burial, yes. you know, yes. and because that's that's mm-hmm. a concern, right. you know, and then we think about, OK, once we get past that thought, what about the people who are left behind right. mm-hmm. and what is their quality of life going to be? Yes. And can we 
do anything to protect that, Mm -hmm. you know, because I've seen children, you know, whose parents have gone on, who wind up in situations that are less than favorable. Mm -hmm. And so you want to seriously consider, like you said, if you insure your car, you should insure your life, Mm -hmm. you know, because you leave people behind that may need some type of of help. Uh So let's start with um, the most commonly needed or, or where do we start with life insurance? Um, when you think of life insurance, which I know most individuals listening to this radio station probably are not going to think of life insurance within the, you know, the next minute or so. Right. But when you start thinking about getting life insurance, it's better for you to talk to a professional. Um, a lot of people want to go to the internet and just look at the different pricing because at the end of the day, they're concerned about their budget. Mm -hmm. My suggestion, my recommendation is talk to an actual life insurance professional. Uh, they would be able to give you different options um, and as, at the same time cost as well and guide you to what is needed, what you actually need when it comes to your life insurance. Right. So there are different kinds of life insurance um, and uh, the two major life insurance uh, policies are either a permanent policy mm-hmm. or a term policy. Okay. okay. And now that's where the confusion comes mm-hmm. in. So what is a term policy? Okay. Perfect analogy. So there's term policy and a per- permanent policy. Mm-hmm. Perfect analogy is owning a home versus renting a home. Okay. Okay. Term policy. Term policy is like renting a home. Um, term, it's just for a certain period of time. It could be for five years. It could be for a year. It could be for 20 years. It really depends on what your needs are. So, for instance, if you have a mortgage for 30 years, right? Okay. typically you buy life insurance for 30 years just in case you die prematurely. You want to make sure that that mortgage is paid off. Right. So that's the term policy right there. Now, just like renting, just like a lease, the lease can be good for only for five years. Right. Right. After the lease is over, the landlord can actually increase your payments. That's right. It's the same thing for term policy. After that specific period, then your payments will go up. Right. Now, having a term policy is the least expensive form of life insurance. Mm -hmm. It's solely for protection. And the benefit is if you die prematurely, then something will be covered by the uh, death benefit from that life insurance. Okay. So that is a term policy. Um, You die, your dependents, your survivors will get some kind of benefit from the life insurance policy. Okay. Now, the other kind of policy is a permanent policy. What is a permanent policy? It's like owning a home right now. So the same thing, you have payments that you have to make, mm-hmm. and it's going, if you die prematurely, your family actually gets some kind of benefit from the life insurance company. Now, within that policy, there's also cash accumulation. So it's like you could equate it to the equity of your home. As you get older, as you keep on paying that life insurance, that there's cash value buildup that you could use, you could borrow from, you could use for whatever reason. So just like owning a home, there's equity buildup inside the policy. Oh, okay. So differences between term and permanent policy. Now, which one is better? Um, There's really no specific answer. When you talk to a life insurance professional, they will be able to guide you as to which one is best for you. Okay. So the same thing in my perfect example, you know, my own personal financial um, planning with life insurance, I have both. Because each one has a different purpose. Right. Okay. So when, if a person were to choose, like, say, term insurance, mm-hmm. and they, can they um, add another policy? Because you said you have, have both. Can they add a, to a term policy? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. they can. They can. Um, they could have both. They could just have term policy. They could just have a permanent policy. It all boils down to what are your needs when it comes to life insurance planning. So there's not a single formula as to, oh, this is what you need. Mm-hmm. It all depends on what your needs are, your okay. life insurance needs. Wow. So we're learning a lot here today. Mm-hmm. You know, Cynthia, before we go any further, I'd like to make sure that everyone has your contact information yes. mm-hmm. so that they can call you. So would you give us your contact information, please? Good afternoon once again. This is Cynthia Tan with New York Life Insurance Company. To talk Today we're talking about life insurance. If you need more information, you may check my website at www.cynthiacetan.com or you could call me. My direct office is, uh, office line is 323-782-3263. That's great. Thank you. Now, Cynthia, we've known each other for a very, very long <laughs> yes. time. And we knew each other from another life. And so I wanted to ask you, what made you decide to get into um, 
life insurance and the, mm-hmm. the different insurances and investments and long-term right. care because I know you do it all. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And so we're specifically t- talking about one type right. of insurance right now. Mm-hmm. We've also mm-hmm. talked to you about you know, other types of insurance, but yes. we're, we're, we're focusing on life insurance today. So what made you decide to get into this business? Um, actually, it's, um, it's a personal experience. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a family member who was actually declined of life insurance. Oh, wow. And never really understood why, and that particular person passed away. And it was very difficult for the family, very difficult for the cousins, I was a cousin, mm-hmm. to actually help the, you know, the survivors. That particular person had, has young children at that point. And it was very difficult for the family to to gather up all the funds just to make sure that the burial is taken care of. At the same time, the dependents who were left are also taken care of. Wow. So I started thinking about it, why life insurance is so important. But again, we don't really think about it. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, I got my life insurance at the age of 18. Didn't really understand what it was. It was kind of like, okay, let me just sign this to get it over with. Mm -hmm. Did not really understand what it was until personal experiences happened in my life that I realized, wow, wow, how important life insurance is when it comes to your own financial planning. And now that I am in this industry, I talk to different individuals about the value of life insurance. And what is so sad about it is when people ask me, what's the best time to buy life insurance? I will always tell them the moment a baby is born. You have to get life insurance immediately. The reason for that is now that I am in the industry, there are a lot of children, believe it or not, children who have been declined of life insurance as well. Wow. So it's for me, it's very important in any kind of planning. So and that's the reason why I decided, okay, this is what I want to do in life to really help people and educate them and make sure that if something happens to them prematurely, that their quality of life will not be in any way affected by a death in the family. Wow. And the reason I wanted to ask you that question was because I know your passion. Yes. And, you know, I talk to a lot of different people about a lot of different things, Mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily always see the passion. So usually when a person is passionate about something, it's from um, a deep, Mm -hmm. you know, something that happened that that scarred them, you know, or or brought them to the light about something. So Mm -hmm. that's why I brought that up because, you know, you never know when something's going to happen to a family member. And, you know, the best time to be prepared is always. Yes. You know, so like you said, and if you get an insurance policy for a small child, I'm Mm -hmm. sure that it's less expensive than trying to insure someone that's a lot older. Mm -hmm. So, and like you said, children get turned down for life insurance because sometimes they are born with, you know, special needs Mm -hmm. or, you know, physical limitations Mm -hmm. that will cause them to not Mm -hmm. be able to get a life insurance policy later on. Right. Well, it's not just that with the way Americans are when it comes to health. There's a lot of children who are diabetic right now. That's and true. because of that, uh, that really poses a risk for them. So when life insurance companies look at that, life insurance companies would just decline them right now until they get older and maybe apply for their own life insurance. So that brings up a point that I never heard or thought of before. Okay. So you mean that, okay, so that's something we've never talked about. Children, yeah, a lot yes. of kids have diabetes these days mm-hmm. because of the poor eating Mm-hmm. that we do here in the United States. Yes. And so those children would be turned down for life insurance. Let's say their parents, you know, are working and they decide to insure the family right. and they, everyone has to be, you know, good, the little small physical mm-hmm. It's not a big deal. And they mm-hmm. see that the children are diabetic. Mm-hmm. Those children would not be able to get a life insurance policy until they are an adult and no longer diabetic or Okay. Well, the way it works is, of course, the underwriter, there's always a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. What's the health history of a person, of a child? And at that particular point, depending on how the parents respond to that, we normally get the medical records of the child. Now, based on underwriting, um, they look at whether it's going to be a high risk or whether it's a decline on the underwriter's part. I have instances where they were approved, but their health rating was so low, and now the cost of insurance is very high. And I have instances to where they were completely denied because uh, someone with diabetes can have different issues as well. Exactly. And um, for instance, uh, by the time maybe they're 18 mm-hmm. and they realize, you know, this child grows an adult right now and realizes that, l- wait a minute, I have to take care of myself and watch what I'm eating. And once they're healthy enough, they could apply for life insurance again.